Hey friends and AI enthusiasts. So as I want to create more AI and data science related content on my channel, I thought it would be a great idea to show you a tool being capable to tackle a tedious and big problem, which is dealing with annoying spreadsheets and create Python pivot tables with the ease of Excel using Python. For that, I partnered with Mido and I'm very excited to welcome one of Mido's creators, Jake, to my channel, who will give you an introduction to this great tool. What's Mido in the first place? Mido is a low-code Python extension allowing users to generate Python in a point-and-click environment inside of a Jupyter Notebook. On top of that, it's totally free. You can have Excel-like pivot tables in Python, analyze your data very quickly, track and communicate your analysis. Additionally, all your favorite data analysis tools are inside of Mito. Some of them are exploratory graphing, pivot tables, data frame merging, spreadsheet formulas, data exploration, column filtering, and many more. And now, without further ado, I will let Jake take over. Jake, the stage is yours. Hey, this is Jake from Mito. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm going to show you how you can really easily slice and dice and transform your data using the Mito Python package. So the first thing we're going to do is run these two lines of code here. So import Mito sheet and Mito sheet sheet, and that's going to render our Mito front end. So the Mito front end, what it is, is it's a spreadsheet front end for Python inside a Jupyter notebook. So every edit we make in this front end here is going to generate the equivalent Python below. The first thing let's do is just get our data in. So we can get data in one of two ways. One is we can just search our local files here. I'm going to decide this uh, Netflix CSV files so with some data about the different uh, things you can watch on Netflix. So we'll do that. And we see when we do that, it populates the Mito sheet with our data from this Netflix CSV file. And below, it generates the code that's turned that CSV into a data frame. The other way we can get data into the tool is we can pass in a data frame directly. So you can call in the Mito sheet at any point in your analysis. If you're working with data frames above, all you have to do is pass in the name of the data frame as an argument to this Mito sheet that she call, and it'll populate the sheet. Before we move forward with just ways you can actually analyze and understand your data using Mito, let me just show you how you can install it really quickly. So all you have to do is these three commands here from our documentation. We're going to install the Mito installer, then run the install command from within the installer, and then just open JupyterLab and you're good to go. So back in Mito, we have some data that is about the different titles, the different things you can watch on Netflix. So there's TV shows and movies, obviously. Let's look at some summary statistics really quickly for the breakdown between TV shows and movies just to understand our data better. I'll go to the summary stats tab here. We can see we have a good amount more movies. We see the exact number there, 5377. Uh, more movies and TV shows we can see. And the other data point I'm interested in here is the rating. So what these movies and TV shows are rated. Again, I'm gonna look at the summary stats for those. Here we can see TVMA, TV14, and TVPG are the most common ratings. And again, we can see the exact values for each of them on those labels that pop up. So what I wanna do here now is just understand the relationship a bit better to really slice and dice my data in a way that gives me some insights. So I'm gonna do a pivot table, which is a great way to do that. I'll click pivot. First thing I can do here is I'm gonna add the ratings as my row. And as the columns, I'm gonna put the type. So it's either gonna be TV show or movie. And as the value, I'll just select um, ratings again and just put the aggregation type as count and what that does there is it populates this here so I'll close this pivot table now and now we've made this really great um, editable updating pivot table inside Mito and so we can see for example the rating TV 14 the Netflix profile has 1,272 movies that have that rating and 659 TV shows that have that rating and again, as I said before, everything we do here is generating the equivalent code below. So when I make this pivot table below, it generates the code that is the that represents this exact same pivot table. So if we were to just do this by hand, it would generate this same pivot table here. Um, and what I can do here is really nice about the generated code is I can use that carry forward in my analysis. So this is all real code I can use. So I can run this cell here. And now this pivot table is called DF2, as we can see here. If I were to print out DF2 right here, we would see the same pivot table that we have in the cell above here. Another thing I might want to do to really understand my data and um, you know help transform and help decide how I want to analyze more is put a graph on top of this, represent this graphically. So what I can do here is just click our uh, graph button here. Let's just look at the um, ratings of the movies versus the different ratings. So I'm going to put ratings on the x-axis and on the y-axis, I'm going to put the movie ratings here. 
and we can see, oh, oops, I just closed that. Let me do it again. X-axis rating, Y-axis movie. And we can see here, TVMA for the movies is the most common rating. TV 14, second most common, TV uh, R, third most common, and TV PG, fourth most common. One thing I can do here, just if I want to zoom in um, and look at a subset of the data, get a better understanding of the compare and contrast here, I can zoom in on a smaller set, and then if I, all I have to do is double tap and get back out to the larger data set. So let's go back to the base data set and look at another relationship, understand our data even more, slice and dice it up a little bit more. Um, we see here, we have the different countries. These are the countries that the data sets are coming from. In the bottom right corner, I can see here, I have 7,787 rows in here. And now if I apply a filter to country, and let's say I just wanna look at the ones that are from Brazil. So I'll do contains Brazil. We can see we filtered our data set down just to the Brazil values or, where, where, or values that contain Brazil in it. And below, if I go here, we see we've generated the equivalent code for that filter. And we'll also see that there are 88 values left in the data set. So we can see that we've shrunk the data set a good amount by filtering down to that, uh, filtering down to the Brazil values. I can remove that filter as well. So let me remove that here. And we're back to the base data set. And let's look, let's say I want to look at I want to see how many values, how many movies or slash TV shows I have from each country. All I have to do is pivot again. Actually, I'll go back to this pivot table here and I can edit it. So I'm going to change this here to, um, to country. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to change this to country and count. And now here I can see for each country, what is the amount of titles we have from there? And if I want to make this a bit easier to view, I'll hit and change this to descending order. And so now I can see United States has the most, India the second most, United Kingdom the third most, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And below, we have again the code for that pivot table, and we have the code for that sort we did, that sorting in descending order. Um, so there's you know, a lot of great analysis we can do in the tool. Mito is a really great way to slice and dice your data, look at different patterns, look at different behaviors in the data, and understand how you want to proceed with the data. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you really enjoyed it.